As you watch this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it. Hey, welcome to Home Group. My name is Rick Renner, and tonight I'm here with Denise Renner, Paul Renner, and Joel Renner. Hey, guys. And if you're a partner with us, we want to thank you so much. We can't do this without you. And it's hand in hand. You're our hand in your hand. And thank you so very much. You know, tonight we're going to look at the pattern of the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the book of Acts. Because the book of Acts is not just a history book. It is a pattern book. Let's all say that. A pattern book. A pattern, pattern, pattern book. book. Pattern book. That's very important because it is the pattern of how God works in the church, not just in the first century, but all the way to the end of the church age. And you're going to find a pattern in the book of Acts about people getting saved and then subsequently receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And tonight I want us to go to John chapter 20. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Let's go to John chapter 20. We're going to read about when the disciples were actually born again. Now, when you come to John chapter 20, verses 21 and 22, the Bible says Jesus came into the room where they were. That was the upper room. Does anybody know who it belonged to? John Mark's mother. John Mark's mother. Her name was Mary. A lot, of, a lot of events happened in that room. And when Jesus came into the room, it says, Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now, entire denominations teach this verse wrong. They teach it wrong. You know what they teach? That Jesus breathed on them and said, Whew, In 50 days on Pentecost, you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They said that this was just a prophecy of Pentecost. That's yeah, wrong. It's absolutely wrong. The word breathe is the Greek word emphusio. It means to breathe into or to inflate. So take the example of a balloon. If you're going to inflate a balloon, do you breathe on it or do you breathe into it? Into it. You breathe into it. And when you breathe into it, the balloon receives your breath. Immediately. Immediately. And when Jesus breathed on them, the Greek says he breathed into them. And immediately, like a balloon, Spirit entered into them. Isn't that amazing? And I have to mention that it is the same word used in the Greek Septuagint for Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, when the Bible says that God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life. That wasn't a prophecy. God literally breathed into his nostrils and his lungs filled with God's life, with God's breath, and he became a living soul. That is the same word used in this chapter. And when Jesus breathed on them, the Greek says he breathed into them, the Holy Spirit came into them. That's why he said, receive you. In the Greek tense means right now in this very moment. And they received the Holy Ghost and they were born again. And guess what accompanied that experience? Peace. It's what he says here. Jesus said, peace be unto you. And he gave them the Holy Spirit. They were born again. And peace is the primary fruit of salvation. Yes. Peace because you're no longer worried about eternal damnation. Peace because you have a, restor you have a restored relationship with your Creator. So there's a peace that comes with salvation that you can't attain on your own. But in that moment, the Holy Spirit came into them. So that's in John chapter 20. So if anybody ever asks you, when did the disciples get saved? They got saved in John chapter 20. They were born again, just like you and I are born again, in John chapter 20. But many, 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 many days passed. And Jesus met them. And what he said to them is recorded in Luke 24, verse 49. And he said, behold. What does behold mean? Lo, behold. Wow. Jesus is so impressed with what he's about to say. That it's like Jesus himself adds an exclamation. Wow, what I'm about to tell you is so amazing. This just nearly dumbfounds me. I'm flabbergasted at what I'm about to tell you. Behold, wow, it is amazing. What is it that's so amazing? Jesus says, I send the promise of my Father upon you. Upon you. 
Well, wait, this is a different work because in John chapter 20, the Holy Spirit came in into them. But now Jesus says the promise of the Father is going to come upon you. And then he goes on to clarify what he means. I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tear you in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. The word endued is a translation of the Greek word enduo. The word enduo means to put on a garment or to put on a piece of clothing, but wait. Enduo, the word endued, describes a person so comfortable in his clothes that he sinks into his garment and becomes at ease in it. I love that. Mm -hmm. Because it means when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we're supposed to sink into it. Mm -hmm. It's to become our new clothing. We're to be comfortable in the power of God. That is just amazing to me. We're to sink into it. Wow. It's amazing. Then... Jesus called it power. And the word power that is used here, again, is the word dunamis, which we've also seen in the two previous programs. It describes power, explosive super, superhuman power that comes with enormous energy and produces phenomenal, extraordinary, unparalleled results. It depicts mighty deeds that are impressive, incomparable, beyond human ability to perform, Miraculous power, miraculous manifestations. It is the old Greek word to describe the full might of an advancing army and the same word which was used to describe a force of nature like a hurricane, a tornado, or an earthquake. Jesus says, I'm going to send a power on you to clothe you. And my intention is for you to be so comfortable and familiar with this power that you just sink into it. And when you do, you will become a supernatural force of nature. You become God's hurricane, God's tornado, God's earthquake to shake things up. You become like an army, a single man army to drive back the forces of hell. That's who we are when we receive the promise of the Father, which is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now let's go to Acts chapter 1. You ready? Okay. Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 5, where Jesus tells them again about the baptism in the Holy Spirit. And he says... And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, you have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. What did we see? That when John introduced Jesus, he didn't introduce Jesus as the Savior, but as the one that baptizes in the Holy Spirit. Jesus wants to take you all the way into the power of God. Paul? There's no stopping with salvation. He wants to take it further. And when John introduced Jesus, it would have made more sense for John inter for, to introduce Jesus as the one who saves, as the one who will be your savior, as the one who will take upon himself the punishment for your sin. But instead of that, he said, the one that will baptize you in power and with fire. But you know, you only receive what you know. Yes. And if all you know is Jesus as a savior then you're going to get saved and you're probably not going to receive much more. But if you know he's also the one that gives you the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He and wants to do both. And further, later, when Christians began to be called Christians, small Jesuses or small Christs, these are people walking in the same power that Jesus had. They were walking, they were little anointed ones. That's really what it means. They wouldn't be called little anointed ones if it wasn't obvious that they had the power. So we have the power. Hey, man, I like that. But hey, then look at Acts 1.8. Jesus said, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come what? Up on you, not in you, because he already came in them in John chapter 20, but now they're going to have an up on work on them. The word epi, the Spirit of God is going to come upon you. We know from Luke 24, 49, the Spirit of God is going to clothe them. And God's intention is for them to sink into this power to really be comfortable in it. But it says you shall receive power. Interesting. The word receive is a form of the Greek word lambano, which means to seize or lay hold of something in order to make it your very own. Almost like a person who reaches out to grab, capture, or take possession of something. And at times, 
It depicts one who graciously receives something that is freely and easily given. And all of this is important because God graciously and freely gives the baptism in the Holy Spirit, but you have to take it. You have to want it. You there's, have to ask for there's it. There's two parts. It's given, but you have to take it. Mm -hmm. And if anybody says, well, if God wants me to have that, he'll give it to me. It doesn't work that way, guys. You didn't get saved that way either. God didn't just save people. They got to receive it. There's a giving and there's a receiving. So you have to receive what God gives. And the verse says, you shall receive power, which again is the Greek word dunamis. God's going to give you a supernatural dynamic power that will make you unlike anything you've been. You'll be a supernatural force of nature for the devil. You're going to drive back his forces. Uh, I, can I interject something? It's a little bit about salvation, a little bit about the Holy Spirit. We often pray for people to get saved. And it's wonderful for you to pray for your relatives to be saved. But it's also important to remember that Jesus wants them to get saved more than you. And sometimes when people don't get saved or our prayers aren't answered the way we expect them to get answered, we think, well, it must not be the will of God. It's obviously the will of God for everyone to get saved. It's just obvious. That's why Jesus came. And when we pray for people to get saved, it would be better if we prayed for them to receive salvation. That yes. would be more correct. That'd be good. Paul. Because Jesus already did everything possible they just need to for them it. to get saved. The same thing applies to the Holy Spirit. We pray for people to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. But we also need to be, pray for people to be open to be baptized in the Holy to Spirit. To receive. To receive. They are the ones that have to say, I want it. Now, I said to you that the book of Acts is a pattern book. Now, the disciples were already saved in John chapter 20. Jesus breathed into them. But then when you come to Acts chapter 2, verses 1, look what it says. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Jump to verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And when the Bible says they were filled, it is the Greek word plato, which means filled to satisfaction and filled to maximum capacity. They weren't just touched. They were filled to overflowing. But hold on. These guys had just been saved in John chapter 20. This is a secondary work of the Spirit. Okay, let's go on. Let's go to Acts chapter 8. You know, sometimes people say, well, yeah, that's the way it happened in the first months and the first few years of the church, and then it didn't happen like that anymore. Oh, it happened right. several times in Acts. All right, let's look at it. Look, let's go to Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8 is one year after Pentecost. A whole year has passed. And the Bible tells us in verse 12 that Philip went down to Samaria and preached, and the people believed, and they were water baptized, and then in Verses 14 to 16, it says, And when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent to them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. And then this paragraph, this parenthesis statement, explains what it means. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. All right. We've already seen that if you're saved, you already have the Holy Spirit. And by the way, you're not water baptized unless you're saved. Well, they water baptized these people. They've repented. They're born again. The Holy Spirit lives in them, but the Spirit's never come upon them. And that's why Peter and John came. The apostles in Jerusalem knew, hey, this work's not done. They need a secondary work of the Spirit. So we see the same thing happening here a year after Pentecost. Hold on. Let's keep going. There's something else very important. Go to Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Four years after Pentecost, the same thing is taking place. Acts chapter 9, Saul is persecuting the church. He meets Jesus on the road to Damascus. He calls Jesus Lord. Well, the Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. saved. He gets saved. And Ananias comes to him. And we read in Acts 9 verse 17. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, now he's already saved. We know that because he called Jesus Lord. He's already saved. The Holy Spirit's already in him, but he needs the secondary work. 
Ananias said unto him, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the baptism in the Holy Ghost. Even the Apostle Paul received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It is amazing. Now, somebody might say, well, but there's no evidence in this chapter that he prayed in tongues. Of course he prayed in tongues. He tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, I thank my God, I speak in tongues more than ye all. The word speak is the word leleo. It means to freely converse or to speak another language fluently. He says, I fluently speak in tongues more than ye all. More than in Greek is the word mal. It means in comparison or comparatively. Comparatively. I speak in tongues more than all of you put together. Paul spoke in tongues. That started the day he was baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hey, can we go back for a moment? Let's go back a moment to Acts chapter 8 because I forgot to mention something. Because somebody might say, well, but when the Samaritans, the Samarians received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there's no record that they spoke in tongues. Well, there really is. Let me show you. Acts chapter 8, verses 18 through 20. And when Simon the sorcerer oh, yeah. saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he saw it? Can't see the Holy Spirit. What did he see? How did he know the Holy Spirit was given? He offered them money saying, Give me this power also that on whomsoever I lay my hands he may receive the Holy Ghost. And listen to what Peter said. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. The word matter is the Greek word logos. You have neither part nor lot in this logos, in this kind of speaking. Hmm. There was something supernatural that happened in their mouths. That's what Simon saw that's how he knew they received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They spoke in tongues. It's all here in the text. You just got to dig a little bit deeper. Then let's go to Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10 is seven years after Pentecost. Seven years. Look at the space we're talking about. So first of all, we have Acts chapter 2. Then a year passes. Acts chapter 8, people are getting saved, then baptized in the Holy Spirit. Then you come to Acts chapter 9. The Apostle Paul is saved. Then he is subsequently baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now we come seven years later to Acts chapter 10 to the household of Cornelius. Cornelius. And the Bible tells us in Acts 10, 44, Peter is preaching and the Gentile Pentecost takes place. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on them. They were already saved. They believed while he was preaching. And then the Holy Spirit fell on them, which heard the word. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit fell upon them, which means to rush upon them. And they knew that they had been baptized in the Holy Spirit. Verse 46 says, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Same thing was happening. Exactly the same thing. Hold on. Let's go to Acts chapter 19. You know how many years Acts chapter 19 is after Pentecost? No. Nope. How many years? 23 years. This just blows to smithereens the argument that this just happened in the first few years of the church. There are actually people who have a whole doctrine they have concocted, which is called the transitional period. And those who teach a transitional period say, well, people only really received the Pentecostal baptism of the Holy Spirit with the speaking of tongues until maybe Acts chapter 8, and then it didn't happen anymore. Wrong, 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 wrong. Come on, open your eyes, read the Bible. When you come to Acts chapter 19, it's happening 23 years after Pentecost. The same pattern. The book of Acts is not just a history book. It is a pattern book to show us the way it's supposed to happen. And when you come to Acts chapter 19, you find in a remarkable story, the Apostle Paul has come to Ephesus and he quickly left. And when he comes back the second time, he comes through the interior roads. He doesn't come through the harbor. Well, Ephesus was really big. And when he left Ephesus, Aquila and Priscilla were ministering down in the lower part near the Agora, near the school of Tyrannus in the lower section of the city. Well, it's like Moscow. Moscow is huge. Just because you work in one part of Moscow doesn't mean you reach the whole city. 
And when Paul came back the second time, he came through the upper part of the city, through the upper district where nobody had worked yet. And he ran into a group of men and he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said the strangest thing. They said, we've, ne we've, we've never heard of that. We've never heard of the Holy Ghost. Well, wait a minute, if they're Christians, how come they didn't know about the Holy Spirit? And Paul said to them in Acts 19, 3 through 5, Paul said to them, under what then were you baptized? The baptism of John. And they said, unto John's baptism. You know who they were? They were Jews who probably had made a pilgrimage to Israel. And while they were there, they heard somebody was preaching at the River Jordan. They went out to hear John and they were baptized just like everybody else. And what did John preach? Repentance. Be repent and believe on the one who is to come. Mm -hmm. The one who is coming. Well, these guys were baptized, releasing all the faith they had that one day a Savior was going to come. And then they went back home. Jesus came. He died. He was resurrected. And they didn't know the rest of the story. All they knew was that they were baptized, believing one day the Messiah would come. They didn't know that He came. That's amazing, isn't it? It's kind of a baptism of preparing yourself for the... Uh, for Jesus. That's right. Consecration. I like to use the example of a couple of Japanese soldiers that were in the Philippines during World War II. And their commander told them to go into the woods, into the jungle, not to come out until the war was over. Do you know what? They found those guys in the, night, the end of the 1970s, two of those men, they were still in the jungle because that's where they were ordered to go until the war was over. Nobody ever told them the war was over. They had to go to Japan and find their commander, who was an old man, bring him to the Philippines to go into the jungle and say, guys, let me tell you something. It happened. It's over. They would not come out until they heard the, from the lips of their commander who sent them there. The war is over. Guess what? It's old news. You just never knew. Well, Paul literally said, hey, guys, let me tell you something. He came. The one you were waiting for, he already came. He died, the Lamb of God. He was raised from the dead. They were like, wow, we didn't know. Nobody told us. And Paul baptized them in water. And then he didn't stop there. He did not stop there. Notice what it says. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then verse 6 goes on to say, and Paul laid his hands on them. Why? Because Paul knew God's pattern. It wasn't enough to receive salvation. God wanted to address them in the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Holy Ghost came on them, not in them. He was already in them, on them. And they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Once more, we see the Spirit came on them, a secondary work of grace, a work of the Spirit. From the beginning of the book of Acts, all the way to the end of the book of Acts, the pattern is absolutely consistent. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 8, Acts chapter 9, Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 19. People are saved and subsequently they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now it can all happen on the same day. It can all happen in the same day. In Acts chapter 10, they believed and immediately were baptized in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 19, Paul preached, they got saved, they were water baptized, and immediately laid. It can happen in the same day, it can happen in the same moment. But what I want you to understand is that there are two works of grace. Can, can I ask a question? I may be, let me be a little bit off the subject, but it seems like the first time it's recorded that they got saved and received the baptism in the same day was with Gentiles. It was. Yeah, that's the first time it's recorded. Previously, they got saved and later received. Well, the Apostle Paul... He was, well, no, that was also to experience. He got saved on the road to Damascus and was later filled with the Holy Spirit. You're right. I've never noticed that before, but that's often what happens when you preach to people who never heard anything about Jesus. They hear about Jesus and then they say, what's next? And you just keep preaching. You know, it's real popular in churches right now. It's called next steps. Mm -hmm. Everybody has these next steps classes they're offering in church. Well, the next step is the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Joel, do you want to say something? No, but I do have a question. How do you know how many years are between each chapter? Joel, that was a good question. Because all these things are very well dated. 
There's a timeline for the whole book of Acts. I have it all. I can show it to you after home group tonight. It is, it's amazing how well the timeline is laid out. Wow. Anyway, have you guys enjoyed tonight? Mm -hmm. Do you see the pattern in Scripture? I mean, it's very verifiable. People are saved. Then they're subsequently baptized in the Holy Spirit. Now, if you don't have the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you're not a second-class Christian. The only thing you have to have to go to heaven is salvation. But salvation gives you peace. The baptism of the Holy Spirit gives you power. power. Why should you live all of your life as a peaceful, powerless Christian? God wants you to be peaceful and powerful. That's why he gives you both. And when you receive the secondary work of the Spirit, you become a spiritual force of nature. Hallelujah. Speak it to you in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you need prayer, call us 1-800-742-5593 or send us an email at prayer at runner.org. We're out of time, but we're going to be back tomorrow night. And as we conclude tonight, I speak Psalm 4-8 over you. It says, I will lay me down in peace and the Lord, I will sleep, and the Lord will keep me safely. That's your sleeping medication for tonight. Go to bed, lay down in peace and sleep, and the Lord will keep you safely. And we'll see you tomorrow night, right back here at Home Group. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this teaching, please subscribe, like, and comment so more people can see it.